Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Kreuter and today I want to do a quick um, tutorial or also a bit of a review of the add-on for Blender called Blam from Stuffmatic. So what, the, what this add-on does is basically um, it helps you to calibrate your camera um, to an image so the camera position and the focal length um, gets yeah, kind of generated out of out of that image. So here's an example of this video. So you see all the axes are um, calibrated to the image here. And if you want to model from that image now, it's really easy because you just have to extrude things along Y and Z axis, for example. So it's a really nice yeah tool for for camera calibration. So uh, in this video, I just want to give you a very quick introduction to this tool because it's, it's one I, I really like and it's really helpful if you want to model, for example, architectural objects, uh, uh, I mean buildings or so. Um, yeah, so first of all, where can you get that add-on? Um, basically, you can get it from, from github.com slash stuffmatic slash blam, B-L-A-M, okay? And in here, you just click on the readme file and there should be here a link to download the latest release. Um, with this one, yeah, you should get to this side where you can download the latest version of it. <coughs> and when you downloaded that one and unpacked it, you go to Blender and in here to use the preferences, add-ons, and then install add-on. Then you just go to the location of that script and click on the Python script which was inside of that yeah um, that zip file so now there should be somewhere um, yeah it's called the Blender camera calibration toolkit um, it's still in development by the way but it's it works already really nice so check that on to activate the add-on and you can yeah just go here into your scene and start using it. So what you have to do is go to the movie clip editor, which is where um, the calibration happens, and open your image. Um, for this I'm going to use an architectural image, this one here. And what I'm going to do is basically, uh, basically use the grease pencil to follow, follow some, some lines. So the first thing I need to do though is um, to decide on which method I want to use. You can use a one point, uh, one vanishing point method or two vanishing point method. Uh, in this situation I want a two vanishing point method because on one hand we have um, the a vanishing point along the side axis uh, where the lines go together somewhere up here. Um, it's not very good visible but it is, it is an imp important thing for the scene. And also um, one vanishing point, some in the background for these lines along, you could say the x-axis maybe, or y, one of those, and that will be uh, uh, the second vanishing point. So we need to um, define now two axes with these lines. So create a new um, grease pencil and, and a new layer, and let's start with, uh, let's say, a red color to just show us that that's kind of the the X axis, and then use Control, uh, uh, Control D, and then left click to set the first point. Let's say somewhere over here. Um, I was not so accurate. So again, so Control D and left click, and then you're still in that um, line drawing mode, and then just go to the next location somewhere. Um, just make sure uh, to have this line along one of these straight lines in your scene and then make another left click to somewhere else and then with escape uh, leave that tool. So we have now our first line along this axis but we still need a second one to show the tool where um, where the vanishing point is. So try to find another um, edge now which should have as much as possible difference of an angle to the first one. So if you would now say, uh, okay, let's do a line here, it wouldn't be so good of an idea because it's almost the same angle. Try to find a one that's uh, much different but still the same axis. That's this one, for example. Um, 
that still uh, that one and that edge here is still straight and shows in the same direction but is um, a way different angle so again control D and left click and then again at the end of that edge and now we're done with the first layer so this layer contains just information about one axis escape again to leave that tool and then create a new layer I will make this one blue color so um, the, the color of the x uh, the z axis and now we're going to again use control D and and the left click to create new lines this one is a bit harder though because we don't have um, those lines to show up so great but I think this one here is a good one to use from here to here because it's straight and it shows up and the other one I'm going to use this one here so escape and then again control D and then left click over here then another left click over let's say here and that should work now all right now before we can yeah convert this information to a calibrated camera we need to change this um, to the axes these two layers demonstrate so the first layer is our x-axis so that's alright we can leave it like that but the second um, layer the second grease pencil layer um, shows us the z-axis instead of the y-axis so change that and yeah the optical center is the image midpoint in this situation and <clears throat> yeah and everything else you have to do is basically make sure you have a camera in your 3d scene so yeah we have a camera here and it's also the active camera and then click on calibrate active camera and then you can switch to the camera and that's all you have to do basically because now you can try to create an object or put just a cube in front of that object uh, in front of that camera and see your, for yourself um, how it looks so let's actually create a plane and make that larger you can try now to position that plane well it's it's flipped um, but yeah let's see how that looks like and you can try to um, put that plane without rotating it to an edge and you'll see it will always fit um, all the straight edges we we um, used before to calibrate the scene and if you move something along the x-axis it will always remain at this edge and not go away so this makes it really easy to model something you can just do as some loop cuts and then start extruding here along the uh, z-axis then you know things like that and like this you can model a very fast an architectural scene without really having to get some measurements and things like that yeah, so this is basically what this tool does, and I, I thought it was a really nice thing, and I really wanted to show you um, where you can get it from and how to use it. Yeah, and as you can see now, we have already a 3D scene. Um, I know how accurate this really is. You would have to really get the measurements and see how good it worked for you, if you want to know that. Uh, but it looks really nice, and is a really great method to, to work on these kind of things and as always i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you again in my next video bye